Okay guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we will discuss the last learning objective under cost accounting and control introduction, wherein the learning objective will be the preparation of cost of goods manufacturing report. So let's start. Okay, so before we proceed to the actual discussion of the actual preparation of cost of goods manufacturing report or the cost of goods sold report, so let's have first a visual presentation how manufacturing process works for us to easily understand the component of the cost of goods manufactured report. So, sa manufacturing, meron po tayong three major departments na involved. Three major departments or yung places na required para tayo ay magkaroon ng production process. So, yung first department, ang tawag po natin dyan ay warehouse or the yung raw materials warehouse. Then, second department, we have the factory or yung mismong planta. Then yung third, we have the another warehouse wherein the finished goods are stored. So sa first warehouse, ang tawag po natin dyan ulit is yung raw materials warehouse. So dito po ini-store lahat ng raw materials na dinadala before sending it to production. So yung second department naman, which is yung factory, so dito naman po nangyayari yung ating production process. Then yung last department, which is another warehouse, di ang tawag naman po naman dyan ay finished goods warehouse. So, punta muna tayo dun sa first warehouse. Yung first warehouse po, sabi ko nga kanina, this is where the raw materials are stored. So, let's say for example, we are into manufacturing of uh, chair or yung furniture. So, yung raw materials warehouse, so dito po natin i-store lahat ng raw materials na i-deliver sa factory. So, hindi mo siya isi-send sa factory agad-agad kasi hindi pa naman siya ipaprocess immediately. So, for the meantime, ang uh, hindi pa siya ipaprocess sa factory, so ilalagay po muna natin siya sa raw materials warehouse. So, dito po muna natin i-receive lahat ng mga materials. So, sabi nga natin, we are into the production of uh, furniture, specific the uh, manufacturing of a table. So, dito muna natin ilalagay. So, ang major direct materials natin doon is yung lumber. So, once na ang lumber natin ay nailagay na natin sa raw materials warehouse, so the next step is to send the lumber to factory for production process. So again, ang, ang process natin mangyayari, mangumauna siyang mapunta sa raw materials warehouse, then isi-send po natin siya sa factory for production process. So sa production process, ito po yung magiging proseso niyan. So it involves cutting, molding, component fabrication, assembly, finishing, and packing. So, since, uh, kung mapapansin nyo, this is where the production process happens. So, dito lang yan nangyayari sa factory. So, dahil dito po nangyayari yung production process, most of the manufacturing, or all of the manufacturing costs ay dito po na incur sa ating factory. So, uh, yung first uh, cost na na-incur natin sa factory, of course, is yung direct materials na nanggaling dun sa ating raw materials warehouse. So, ang ating first cost is, of course, is yung direct materials. Of course, we need to convert the direct materials into finished product. That's why we have to uh, incur another uh, cost. Ito namin yung tinatawag natin na conversion cost, which is ang composition niyan, is yung direct labor and the factory overhead. So, once na na-incur na natin yung direct labor, factory overhead, at direct materials, so, mabubuo na po natin yung tinatawag nating manufacturing cost. So, ito lang naman po yung kailangan natin para ma-produce yung ating finished product which is yung table na nakikita nyo sa picture. So, once na okay na po yung table na nakikita nyo sa picture, of course, once it is already finished, it will be delivered to the finished goods warehouse. So, pag na-deliver na po yan sa finished goods warehouse, dapat po ayan ay finished na. So, dahil finished na, ang magiging ano natin yan, approach, is uh, ilalagay natin yan sa ating physical store or kaya naman, dito po umu-order yung ating mga wholesalers. So, kung mapapansin nyo po, uh, yung tatlong department na yan, then ito po yung mga department na nag store ng ating three major inventory accounts sa ating manufacturing business. Dun sa ating raw materials warehouse, ang ini store lang niya po is yung ating raw materials inventory. And then sa factory naman, ang ini store po natin dito ang inventory account which is yung work in process inventory. Work in process kasi dito po pinaprocess ang lahat ng production. So in case hindi natapos ang production uh, at hindi pa siya tapos, 
bawal siyang isend sa finished goods warehouse. So, ibig sabihin, kapag meron pang uh, natirang unfinished product, so, ilalagay lang po natin yun sa work and process inventory. Ang work and process inventory po natin, ang magiging cost involved yan ay tatlo. We have the direct materials, direct labor, and the factory overhead. So, Kaya yung matatapos sa ating factory, of course, it will be sent dun sa ating finished goods warehouse. So, ang ating finished goods warehouse, ang in-maintain nating inventory account dyan is yung finished goods inventory. Okay guys, so since we already have an idea how manufacturing process works, uh, as we presented earlier through visual presentation, so let's proceed to the main objective of this video which is the preparation of cost of goods manufactured report or the cost of goods sold report. So as I mentioned earlier, so meron tayong three major departments na nag store ng three major uh, inventory accounts. So ito po yun, di ba? We have the raw materials inventory, we have the work in process inventory, and the finished goods inventory. So let's assume these boxes as a presentation or as a representation of the uh, content of the cost of goods manufactured statement or the cost of goods sold statement. So, para mas madalian kayong ma-analyze, so let's say yung ating left side, ito po yung tinatawag nating entry point. Then yung right side, ito naman po yung ating exit point. So, since we are talking about production process, so we are talking about the process, so of course, yung i papasok natin or yung papasok sa raw materials inventory which is manggagaling sa left side at lalabas naman siya sa right side ay naman yung papasok dun sa another left side ng ating work in process inventory. So once done, yung work in process inventory natin ng right side ay naman po yung papasok dun sa left side ng finished goods inventory. Then sa finished goods inventory naman yung right side, dito naman po yung lalabas na dun sa ating uh, finished goods inventory na ibebenta naman sa ating ultimate client. So, of course, dahil meron tayong raw materials inventory, as I mentioned earlier, yung, right, yung left side natin, dito po yung ating entry point. So, hanggat hindi pa siya lumalabas sa ating uh, exit point, which is the right side, so dito po muna natin ilalagay yung ating mga inventory accounts. So, sa raw materials inventory, so ang beginning inventory po ay nakalagay sa ating left side, ay yung ating namang exit point, which is yung ending inventory, ilalagay natin sa right side. So, kung mapapansin nyo, para lang po siyang enhance T-account. Okay? So, work in process naman, ganun din po. The beginning inventory, ay ilalagay lang po natin sa left side. Then, yung work in process inventory ending, ay ilalagay natin sa right side. Sa finished goods inventory naman, ganun din po ang process. The beginning inventory will be put under the left side. And yung ating naman finished goods inventory end, ay ilalagay naman natin sa right side. So, let's go with the process as I discussed earlier. So, dito naman po ang approach na po natin ay accounting na. So, ibig sabihin, we will, we will be dealing dun sa ating mga affected accounts. So, start tayo dun sa first process which is yung uh, raw materials inventory or yung sa ating raw materials warehouse. Dun sa raw materials inventory, so kailan ba na, dum, nadadagdagan or dumadami yung ating raw materials inventory? Of course, through purchases. So, ang una nating transaction sa raw materials inventory, of course, meron tayo diyang purchases. So, kung may purchases, lahat ng related na transaction with regards to the purchase of the raw materials ay dito po natin yan ilalagay. Kung familiar kayo sa purchases, ito yung na-encounter nyo na dun sa inyong merchandise accounting. So, sa purchases, pwede rin po yung madagdagan through freight in kasi ang freight in po ay part ng cost ng product. So, since we are purchasing a raw materials inventory, ang freight in po ay ilalagay po natin doon sa ating raw materials inventory. Then, of course, if there are a discounts, which is the purchase discount and the purchase return and allowance, eh, dedidak lang po natin yan doon sa ating purchases. Pero since hindi naman to T-account, kasi normally ang purchase discount at purchase return and allowance ay nilalagay yan po sa right side. So, since ito lang naman ay visual presentation, so, doon ko muna siya nilagay para mas madali nyo siyang maintindihan. So, lumalabas ang beginning inventory raw materials, add mo yung purchases, tsaka i-add mo yung freight in, tapos ililess mo yung purchase discount, tsaka purchase returns and allowance. Ang tawag po natin dyan ay hindi po total goods available for sale. Kasi hindi mo pa naman ibibenta yung raw materials mo at 
uh, ay dad, uh, of course dadaan muna siya sa production process ang term na ginagamit ay total materials available for use ulitin ko po beginning inventory plus purchases plus freight in minus purchase discount minus purchase returns and allowance ang lalabas po na result doon ang tawag natin ay total materials available for use so ang total materials available for use Of course, ito po yung total materials na isisend nyo po sa work in process inventory. However, as I mentioned earlier, not all materials will be sent to factory immediately. Of course, hindi naman lahat yan kayang iprocess doon sa ating factory. So, ibig sabihin, meron pong may iwan at meron pong may papadala sa ating factory. So, ang normal process po ng mga inventory, of course, doon sa at, uh, ang ating um uh, Accounting procedure niyan is yung pinakamadali which is yung periodic inventory system. So under periodic inventory system, so normally to get the uh, materials use or yung ating isi-send sa work in process inventory, magkakaroon lang po tayo ng tinatawag natin na physical counting. So sa physical counting, bibilangin lang po kung magkano yung natirang raw materials inventory. Whatever the remaining amount, ang ating assumption ay yun po yung ating direct materials use. So basically, to get the direct materials use, you just need to deduct ending inventory from the total materials available for use. So kapag dinedak na po natin yung ending inventory, raw materials, sa total materials available for use, ang lalabas na result po doon ay yung tinatawag natin na direct materials. Yung direct materials use, ito naman po yung isisend natin sa factory para naman i-process yung, ating, uh, yung production ng ating direct materials. Kasi yung direct materials, hindi pa po yan napaprocess, kaya, kaya nga siya sinisend doon sa ating factory. So yung direct materials, sabi nga natin kanina, yung right side, this will be our exit point, and yung left side, this will be our entry point. So from right side ng raw materials inventory, ilalagay po natin yan doon sa left side ng ating work in process inventory. So since nasa work in process inventory na or nasa factory na yung ating direct materials, In order for it to be uh, transformed into finished product, so magkakaroon po tayo ng tinatawag ng additional uh, cost na maiincur. Yung na-discuss nga natin kanina, aside from the direct materials, kailangan po natin yung isama yung conversion cost. Namely, the direct labor and the factory overhead. So kapag kompleto na po yung direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead, ang tawag na natin dyan kanina, is yung manufacturing cost. So, ang, ang manufacturing cost po, which is ang composition niyan yung tatlo, i-add lang po natin yan sa beginning inventory ng work in process. So, ang lalabas po na result doon ay total goods placed in process. So, tinawag siyang total goods placed in process kasi ito po yung mga obligation na na-incur natin for the current year, which is the manufacturing cost, at i-add nyo lang po yung mga cost na na-incur mo last year na hindi pa nasisend doon sa ating finished goods inventory. That's why ang term na ginagamit dyan ay total goods place and process. So again, same procedure lang din po sa raw materials inventory. Once we already have an amount na total goods place and process, in order to determine the amount to be transferred doon sa ating finished goods inventory, ang ginagawa lang po yan ay nagkakaroon po ng tinatawag ulit natin na physical counting. Yung physical counting po, binibilang lahat ng cost na na-incur sa factory at lahat ng malilista doon ay ilalagay po natin sa tinatawag nating work in process inventory ending. So, kung hindi na isama sa work in process ending, so ang assumption na ang tawag po doon ay tinatawag nating cost of goods manufactured. So, cost of goods manufactured, these are the finished goods inventory which uh, were finished during the period. So sabi ko nga kanina, ang right side, this will be our exit point. So yung cost of goods manufactured, it will be transferred to finished goods inventory sa left side. So ayan, so yung arrow, ilalagay mo lang po doon sa left side ng finished goods inventory, uh, which represent the total goods manufactured with ED kasi ito po ay mga finished product na. So ang gagawin po natin, ang finished product na na uh, gawa natin within the period or I-add lang po natin yan sa beginning inventory ng finished goods natin para makuha natin yung familiar na tayo na term, which is yung total goods available for sale. 
So, ang total goods available for sale, ililipat lang natin dun sa right side. Same procedure po ng finish ng ating raw materials sa work in process. So, ang nangyayari po, binibilang lang yung ending inventory through physical counting. Whatever the remainder, ang assumption, this will be our cost of goods sold. So, ayan po yung pinaka-process sa ating accounting para po makapag-prepare na tayo ng cost of goods manufactured report or yung cost of goods sold. So, una sa raw materials, sa work in process, then bupupunta naman siya sa finished goods inventory. Okay, so let's proceed now to the actual preparation of cost of goods sold report. So, ito yung kaninang na-discuss natin na sa left side. So, we have the raw materials inventory, work in process, and finished goods inventory. So, ngayon ilalatag na po natin sila doon mismo sa ating schedule of cost of goods sold. So, tandaan ang schedule of cost of goods sold is a component of the statement of comprehensive income. So, yung statement of cost of goods sold, much better, ihiwalay natin ng presentation. Kumbaga, lalagyan lang natin ng schedule. So, yung schedule po, ito po yung magiging composition niyan. So, para hindi kayo mahirapan, so, diniscuss na natin kanina yung process, yung virtual presentation, tapos meron din tayong parang T-account, which is represented by boxes. So, kapag magpe-prepare po tayo ng statement of goods sold, Ang first step po natin, of course, is to determine the direct materials. So, ilagay natin dito, direct materials. So, of course, the computation of direct materials is simply uh, dun sa ating raw materials inventory, lahat ng information ng galing. So, dun sa first part, punta lang kayo dun sa raw materials inventory, which is yung direct materials. So, ang una natin is yung beginning inventory plus purchases plus freight in minus purchase returns discount ay purchase returns and allowances and discount. So, ang makukuha natin doon ay total materials available for use. So, yung total materials available for use natin, ililess lang po natin yung na-compute natin or na-kuha natin through physical counting yung ating raw materials ending. So, pag na-less natin yung ending inventory, makukuha na po natin yung direct materials use. So, nakuha na natin yung first objective which is direct materials use. Then, pwede na po tayong pumunta doon sa ating second box which is yung work in process inventory. So, ang una nating cost component which is direct materials use, i-add lang po natin yung ating direct labor, i-add po natin yung factory overhead. So, kompleto na yung ating manufacturing cost, direct materials plus direct labor plus factory overhead. So, ang lalabas na result niyan is manufacturing cost. So, ang manufacturing cost po, i-add po natin yung WIP beginning. Ang makukuha po nating result doon ay yung total goods placed in process. So, after we computed the total goods placed in process, ililess lang natin yung work in process ending para naman po makuha yung cost of goods manufactured. So, ang, kung ang schedule na ginagawa natin is only cost of goods of manufactured, so pwede na po kayo mag-stop dito, pwede na kayo mag-double rule. Pero since ang ginagawa po nating schedule is schedule of cost of goods sold, so pwede na po nating ituloy hanggang doon sa ating last inventory account which is the finished goods inventory. So as I mentioned earlier, cost of goods manufactured represent the finished goods na na-finish na natin uh, during the period. So cost of goods manufactured, i-add lang po natin yung finished goods beginning. Then na makuha po natin dyan yung ating familiar na term which is yung total goods available per sale. Then, pag nakuha na natin yung total goods available per sale, magkakaroon ulit ng physical count para dun sa ating finished goods inventory. So, ilales lang po natin yan. So, after natin ilales yung finished goods inventory from total goods available per sale, dito na po yung pinaka-ultimate or pinaka-ilalim ng ating cost of goods sold, which is the cost of goods sold itself. So, gagawin nyo lang after makuha yung cost of goods sold, i-double roll po natin. So this is how to prepare the cost of the schedule of cost of goods sold under manufacturing business.